Hi, I'm Beth Comstock and I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Today we're at the new lab in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. It's been reborn as an incubator, as a place where startup companies in hardware are getting their start. This is the future in five. I talked with Andrew Shearer, the founder of Farm Shelf, a new company that's inventing what it means to go from farm to table. Tell us who you are and what's your story. Yeah, my name is Andrew Shearer. I'm the CEO and um, co-founder of Farm Shelf and we're making it possible for anyone to grow their own produce. We've gone about taking um, the hardest parts of growing your own food and automating that. Um, taking technology from different industries, everything from the overhead LED lighting industry to ad technology and time-lapse photos so that um, we're empowering a new generation of people to grow their own food cost-effectively with less resources and it tastes amazing. What inspired you to get Farm Shelf going? So I was working in the ad tech space um, at Pinterest okay, and Twitter. Okay, that makes sense. Ad tech to ad farm. Tech, yeah. It's perfect. It makes perfect sense. But I think when we're around these different technologies and then you start looking at other problems or ideas that you want to go after in your life, there's just so much opportunity. Well, and what was the problem? What were you thinking? I, I got to go solve what? Um, Hunger? I mean, you're doing that. Hopefully. I mean, yeah. our, like, my dream is to like, replace UN food aid in 10 years with um, hydroponic farming um, aid that is able to be shipped into countries um, using similar technology. What we're doing is we're collecting all this data on what's going on with the plants, constantly optimizing the different conditions, and then delivering an experience to the consumer in the form of an app, um, where you know they can control their farm shelf unit right from their app, um, seeing their the time lapse of their lettuce growing um, in you know as little as 21 days, and being able to share that. And it's 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 fun, it's enjoyable, and when we look at what that's going to enable, it's more efficient crop yields, um, distributed farming at scale in cities where all of a sudden now you're able to grow you know, high quality produce no matter where you are. Um, so this is very much the future of where cities are going, is you're going to have hydroponic farming. Is that, is that what you're bet betting on? Absolutely. It's going to change our food system. You know, it's going to enable us to grow crops where they're being consumed. What really is going to be um, amazing about, I think, what we're doing with hydroponic farming is how do you make it accessible and possible for anyone to do so that you really bring the food supply system into the city. Talk about the system here. So yeah. basically, I mean, it's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. It's, it's, this is one of our beta units. Um, and as we go on, we'll be making these more modular so they fit into existing spaces and cities. And um, this is somewhat like an appliance. I, I, you've, you've referred to it as an appliance. Absolutely. It's kind of this intersection between an appliance, gardening, and a farm. Um, a single unit can do uh, 120 plus heads of lettuce in a month. Um, Say that again. A single unit can do 120 heads of lettuce. Yes. Oh my God. And well, we are going to be continuing to optimize those metrics where we think we can get up to 180 just by the way that we're doing the spacing of the plants. So you can imagine schools, hospitals, all kinds of facilities who before couldn't necessarily get fresh food, suddenly they can do that. Absolutely. And you know, if we want to eat healthy and live um, better lives, you know, it's about having high quality food that we want to eat. And I mean, like if you just take a bite of, uh, let's see, we have a, an opal basil down here. If you want to grab a leaf, um, it's, you know, it tastes great. And your hands are the first hands that have ever touched it. So oh. it's clean. Um, it's and really good. tastes amazing. So like, how do you make people want to eat more, more uh, vegetables, make them more nutritious, make them better tasting and available you know, for a, a great price and whenever they want. Who are the kind of people you're bringing into the company? What are their skill sets? Everything from botanists, um, our botanists uh, study controlled environment agriculture to electrical and mechanical engineers from the computer and um, auto industry. When we look at this problem, you know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel um, and have to reinvent all these different parts. So we realize that there are advances that have been made in other areas of technology that when applied to the space changed the game from our food supply yeah. system. And it sounds like a very interdisciplinary team which I'm sure has unexpected benefits. Absolutely. You get a botanist together with an engineer I don't imagine I don't know what comes out of that but I'd love to think about that. It's a lot of fun. Look back at the 1800s like over 75 percent of the world population was involved in some way growing their own food. Mm -hmm. Today in the U.S., the number of people... So removed from it, aren't we? Absolutely. And we know that something's wrong there. Yeah. Um, and we want that connection to our food. And it's the way, to, like, you know, distributed food systems. It's like they used to be where you couldn't ship food 3,000 miles. We can now, but we probably shouldn't. And it doesn't taste that good. Yeah. And so if you can, can grow it where you are, you can take it where it used to be. Yeah, it used to be 70% of people. But we don't have the time or, or the efficient systems unless we start 
changing the way that we supply our food. I don't know if my grandkids will know that lettuce came from a farm that wasn't at their house. No, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, of course, like we go downstairs or we go outside and I grab this lettuce that was grown here, or these tomatoes or these peppers or strawberries, pesticide free, herbicide free, and it tastes amazing. Yeah, it's almost like they won't remember a time when we had pesticides or what is that? Why would you need that? And they'll look at us like we were crazy yeah. for yeah. shipping food thousands of miles and doing this thing that they're like, okay, so let me get this straight. The world started out doing this and then we went to this and then we finally got back to like food being grown where it's being consumed. Well, it's um, a great vision for the future and it's not that far off. So congratulations thanks. and thank yeah. you, Andrew. Thank you.